All right, folks, welcome back. Went down to Wilbur to pull a bath and got us a body control module, as they have it listed, or front control modules we talked about. This one came out of a 2010 Jeep Commander. Uh, same part number, the P04692221 Alpha Golf. This is an Alpha Foxtrot. Usually Chryslers go up in succession, so hopefully this is just some newer hardware. Uh, this does have the vehicle configuration stored on it. I've yet to look in service data to see if they are programmable. They're obsolete new, uh, plus they were over $800 when they were new. Uh, when I went up to get this one off the vehicle, it was already undone. It was just literally laying against the fuse box, but it looks clean. I don't see any corrosion on the pins or up here. So I've pulled this one up. We're going to unplug it. When I drove the vehicle in, it was still uh, still acting up because it still broke. So we're going to take the screws out of this little guy. Yeah, I don't know why somebody had it undone down at the Wilberts. The fuse box was still there. The connectors were still there. I figured as soon as I picked it up, it would be all corroded, but it wasn't to my surprise. I didn't have a chance to go to Wilbert, so I had actually ordered one of these from another local salvage yard, a, a full service yard where they drop it off to me. And that guy showed up with it this morning and it wasn't even the right part. He brought the fuse box with no front control module on it. Even though I was very specific when I was on the phone with him of which part we needed, he's like, yeah, yeah, I got you. I know what you need. Been doing it for 80 years. He knew exactly what I needed. And then the funny part of that was the fuse box he brought looked like a Chia Pet. It was the greenest fuse box I've ever seen. So I didn't even bother uh, to contact that salvage yard to find out if they had the front control module off it because it's corroded as the fuse box was they sent me. I could only imagine what the front control module looked like. So we're going to take and hopefully pull this little guy off here. Come on, little fella. Might be a real piss pot, huh? Yeah, tough guy, huh? All right, so we got her off. So there's the OG. Get a little closer look at the green crusties. Now this one, we're not even gonna bother screwing it down yet. I'm sure we're gonna have all sorts of problems. I believe it has VIN information stored in here and amongst other things besides vehicle configuration. So let's see what kind of issues we have. We're just gonna plug in a scan tool. I'm gonna set the screws to the side here. Those are the four little screws that hold that in. We'll plug in a scan tool and see, uh, see how many problems we have. Well, kind of good news, kind of bad news. Uh, bad news is we got an airbag light on. All the other codes have cleared. Everything else seems to be happy. And we have a configuration mismatch. Uh, just to make sure that uh, this code wasn't there originally, I did pop the original uh, front control module back in, uh, and it's not. So it's uh, vehicle configuration data that's that's missing. You know because this this is different. This is VIN differently than than the OG. Uh, I can't find, there's nothing in service info about even replacing the front control module with a new one other than just, you know, unbolt it, stick it on. They've got information I could find on reprogramming the PCM, TCM, but that was it. So, like I say, if this was a newer Chrysler with a tip -em, I would plug in Y-Tech and push the button for vehicle configuration restore and we'd be, you know, off to the races. Uh, the good news is, is it fixed our problem because now the vehicle will run without the tack bouncing and that was the original customer complaint. Okay, so we fired up here. But of course, you know, we have an airbag light on. But I, I let it run for a little while here. You know, I mean, it was the other one, it was bouncing in the first 15 seconds, so. It's still cold, so it's idling high, but but hold it steady. So we did we did fix the customer complaint, but we're in a, a little bit of a dilemma because, 
you know they don't make that module new so we i'm gonna have to do some research as far as what we have to do to get the correct vin and the correct vehicle configuration in it uh, i do not pay for chrysler software uh yearly uh chrysler is one of the most expensive oems that you can pay for so i don't buy it yearly uh so i would have to buy a short-term subscription uh to even uh, to even test it out which we may do um you know we may do just to see i did poke through you know poke through on here uh, because there is the option to uh, write the vin number to it and you can only do that on a brand new module i tried it anyways just for the heck of it i went through and hit you know set vin uh, it lets you put it all in and stuff, but it doesn't write it to it. It, you know, creates an error. And then I went under the um, uh, program network configuration, which allows you to add and remove uh, different modules off the can B bus. Uh, but that's that's simply that's all it does. One thing that had me a little bit uh, about wondering about something here, I'll show you. It shows original VIN and current VIN. Now this is not the VIN number for this vehicle. This is the VIN uh, that's off the vehicle that we took it off from. Uh, Tipums also show this information and you're allowed to write it one time. And that's that gets changed when you do a configuration restore. So this kind of allude, you know, makes me think that perhaps it can be changed. So I think what we'll do is we're gonna uh, get the Y Tech. I'm gonna buy a short-term subscription, and then we're gonna go in and uh, you know see if that option's there. So I don't know what else to do, but that's where we're at. I went ahead and bought the subscription, uh, as I mentioned, to uh, Y Tech Two after passing 35 different security tests, getting secret codes, paying the piper we're in, and uh, so some of you are familiar with this screen. It's uh, we've used uh, Ytech in the past for diagnosis and stuff, but when the prices got so high, I just quit paying for it. You know, for the years we just buy uh, General Motors now for the year Chrysler, Ford we we buy as needed. Uh, so we come in here, and this is all the topology. So this looks similar to that uh, very first picture that we printed out. We can see all the modules don't have any codes except for the airbag. There's a flash update for the PCM, but what we're con concerned with, or what we're hoping for is that we have this button right here, restore vehicle configuration, which I think if we click that, it's probably gonna bring us down to uh, vehicle preparation, restore vehicle configuration. Okay, uh, let's just see, it's probably not gonna do it because we don't have, oh, this procedure's been updated. Oh, okay, I had that backwards. We gotta go back to guided diagnostics. It tells us that it's back under that menu, but that's it's probably gonna give us the finger because we don't have a subscription to tech authority so let me go on and buy my tech authority subscription this is where chrysler gets you to program you have to have like let's say we wanted to program we want to program the engine control module you've got to buy your subscription to y tech then you've got to buy a subscription to tech authority and then you've got to buy a programming token uh so it'll cost you just, just base costs you have the laptop you have uh an interface device it's going to cost you about 135 dollars just to buy one token to do a programming on a single on a single VIN. So yeah, Chrysler is a huge ripoff. Uh, they're two to three times more expensive than any other OEM, uh, domestic-wise anyways. But anyhow, enough chat chat. I'm gonna get my Tech Authority subscription. I'll be right back. Yeah, we got sidetracked there for a little bit. Talking with the customer. I did go on and get the Tech Authority subscription or Stellantis or whatever the heck they wanna call it now. So let's go guided vehicle diagnostic review. This, this procedure will update, restore vehicle configuration based on sales code and VIN. Now, if you're doing a TIPM, if this was an actual TIPM, this is the process you use to rewrite the VIN to it and reconfigure the vehicle. So hopefully this works on a front control module. It downloads it from Chrysler, and then hopefully it can write the configuration data to the front control module. There it is. Uh, usually you gotta unplug it. Yep, okay, shut off ignition, close the doors, unplug tool, wait for one minute. I'm gonna do that. Well, we're waiting for the modules to power down in this thing. We got another Jeep over here. This one here ate up the camshaft. So she's getting all new lifters. I got that head put on it. Gotta get that head cleaned up and put on it, but it gobbled up that cylinder. So you can see she's gouged up. Got another one here gouged up. This is the one that was misfiring. 
And then there was another one back here, just starting to eat away on that cam lobe. So it makes a mess out of these lifters. That one there is pretty well flat spotted. So anyhow, that's what we're going on over here. That's my second Hemi this week. Got another one out in the parking lot of 2015 we just got done doing. Also, so yeah, it's a Jeep thing you wouldn't understand. For a minute has been up. Let's flip the key on. I don't want to start it because uh, I don't know if I got cables in the way up here. Let me uh, hook back up to it here and see if our new VIN number is in there now. All right, we're back up and running. We'll go to all DTCs. Yeah, we still have an active code in the airbag module. Interesting. Well, that's frustrating. We'll clear them out. It's going to come back, I'm sure. And I would think it would have gone to... Uh... Yeah, so it just came back. Yeah, U1415. Let's go into the front control module here. Uh, and let's see if it has the new VIN in it now. Uh, we're gonna go to configuration. We should see the old VIN and the new VIN, I'm thinking. Uh, no, maybe it's under, uh, I know where it is on the Alto. Details probably here. Yeah, see it does not change the VIN. So that's interesting. We do a vehicle configuration restore and it did not change the VIN from original to current. So that's, that's where we're having an issue still. So that's frustrating. Um, I'm gonna poke around here and see uh, see what we can do. Well, it's hopeful there for a minute on this one, folks. Uh, I'm at my end of my rope. Uh, I don't know what to do. I'm gonna contact Keith over L1 Auto Diagnostics to see if he has you know, any kind of backdoor way to perhaps re-virginize this module to write the correct VIN to it so it'll do the configuration restore properly. I tried the configuration restore again. Uh, and, it, and it doesn't work. Uh, at this point, if he doesn't know, I may have to go online onto some of our uh, professional forums like diag.net and put that question out there to the community to see if anybody's had success or knows what to do or even check Google in some cases. Uh, you know, if somebody's been down this road, certainly I'm not the, uh, not the first and without new parts availability, this is all we have. We have access to used ones. And unfortunately, I think in the future, this is what's gonna total cars. Uh, you know, we're not gonna have classic car shows with, you know, 2015s and newer showing up just because all the electronics are gonna be obsolete or unrepairable or unobtainable, rather. So it's kind of sad, but it is what it is. I'm gonna keep on keeping on and let you know what we figure out. Well, would you look at that, folks? The airbag module is now happy. And when I go into the front control module, our VIN number is the VIN number that belongs to this vehicle, both original and current. How did we get there? That's a little bit of a longer story. I mentioned I was gonna call Keith over at uh, L1 Auto Diagnostics. Now he's helped us in previous videos. Uh, the most recent one was a Kia we did that had a bad PCM. We had to send the two PCMs to him. He did an EEPROM on them. Uh, went in there and you know changed the VIN and software and stuff from the original to the use one uh, saving us you know over a grand uh, With this here. He has a program some non Chrysler program I don't know what it is. and I don't know if I'm at liberty to say uh, That he can backdoor into the front control module and tip them's and re-virginize them per se uh, totally wipe them clean of the current VIN and configuration and then all we had to do was go back in with Y-Tech after he did that and run a vehicle configuration restore. It wrote the VIN, it configured the FICM with the, or the front control module with this configuration for this VIN number, in which case made the airbag module happy. Now the VINs match the configuration with, you know, the number of airbags or maybe the number of sensors or whatever it was seeing that it wasn't seeing before, it's, it's happy now. So. Uh, that is a service that he provides. If you want to do it remotely, you have to have a CARDAC 3 interface device. That's what I have. Uh, he also is able to do this uh, on the bench. So if you have a CAN controlled vehicle with a control area network that runs a front control module and you need to put a used one in and it's a Chrysler, he does have that service where you can send the front control module to him. 
he can re-virginize it uh, for lack of a better term and then send it back but then you have to have the ability to do a configuration restore on it to let it know what it is and you know what VIN. so uh, that is a service he offers let's start this up real quick I'll, I'll prove to you guys that it's fixed that the tack doesn't bounce anymore um and then and then that's it then we're done I think, you know what, didn't I already show you this? Yeah, I did, I'm an idiot. But we can see the airbag lights out now, uh, so that's good. Uh, and obviously the problem has been resolved. Oh, and I did look into that CAN B bus. The four volt delta on that is correct. So from the uh, uh, the CAN high and CAN low that we were looking at, the, the waveform on that is correct. So we'll leave it at that. We did make the right call. I'm gonna add a little bit of tape, uh, some tested tape back to the bottom of that harness. I do believe I have that little piece that we took off it uh, that I've got to put on there and just kind of get this buttoned up, put the screws in it. Uh, customer needs a couple keys programs, so we'll get them done too. So uh, that's it folks, thanks for watching. Insty the Facebook, you guys know where to find us. Just my viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. But we're gonna need a little bit of help. So thanks for watching.